welcome to House and God and Get Up Heaven Church. Who is excited? Who is ready to Woo! worship? Jesus? God, we thank you, we honor you, we bless you, Lord. We thank you, God, because you're in this place, Jesus. And we just want to honor you by saying we love you, God. We're going to give you the highest praise. We're going to give you the highest praise. We're going to give you the highest praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Jesus. Be in this place. We already know that you're here, God. Be with those watching on the online, God. Let your presence flow, Father God, wherever, whoever is connected to this channel, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.
us? Do you realize that you are here with the creator of the universe, that he is here listening, he is present, he is available? Hallelujah. Come on, give him a great, great, mighty praise. They say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me to the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord Jesus.
lift up your voice. He is worthy of your praise. Hallelujah.
says I was thinking about that song and Lord I give you my heart I give you my mind I give you my soul oh yes the thing is that um I believe that that this is what God put in my heart there's there's a lot of people out there claiming claiming Lord, I give you everything, my heart, my life, and you're living, you're not living right. And God is, God is, I think we're living in a season now that God is, is, is saying, you better get your life straight. I'm telling you, the Lord has been pressing this in my heart lately, saying, you need to get your life straight. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep saying the same thing over and over again. You need to get your life straight. Because things are... Things... I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's happening. But God is doing something. And 2023 and these coming... Whatever is coming next. You better get your life straight. You better get your life straight with Jesus. Stop claiming that you give Him your heart. And you give Him everything. And you ain't doing none. It's just all talk. No action. Okay? I'm not preaching today, even though I feel like preaching right now, but I'm not going to preach today. I have a special guest. Oh, and happy birthday to Stacy. We love you. <laughs> She's not, I wish happy she, birthday, Stacy! I wish she was with us here today, but she's somewhere. She is with us in spirit and, and, on, and online. online. But um, I just, I really appreciate her and everything that she has done for this ministry. And today is a special day in her life. And I'm just, I'm going to take a second. I'm going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for Stacy's life, Lord. I thank you for her life, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you give her many, many more years, Father God, of life. Healthy, Father God. But a, a, a life on fire for you, Lord God. Lord, I pray that this year, Father God, will light a flame inside of her, Lord, that I never yes, before, Lord, Lord Yes, Lord, yes. That, Father, that this year, Father God, will be her year of breakthrough, Father God. I'm not going to say the year, Father God, her, her date, Father God, but... But she knows, Father God, and, and I know that you're going to do a mighty work, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Stacy, for everything. We love you. Yes. Hallelujah. And um, with all that, um, I'm going to ask the preacher to come up here. She's got a word, and she's going to bring fire up in here. So get ready. Get ready for what God has. Amen. God bless you. so amazing they have helped me so much in my spiritual walk and I just want to like if we can just clap for yourself as we have <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> I'm so thankful I'm so thankful hallelujah so today I'm going to be speaking okay first of all I want to start off by saying that the Lord has given me this word. Um, this is not something that I just, you know, whisked up on my own. I want you to remove me from the equation. I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you and say, Today, my life is going to be changed. Today, my life is going to be changed. I don't know. I don't think y'all meant it. Go ahead and say it again. Today, Today my life is going to be changed. Be changed. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today, God is going to speak. I feel him in my spirit. And I just want to welcome him, Lord Jesus. Come and take control of my, my, my words, Lord. Come and do your thing, Lord. 
So to all of those who are writing notes, the title to my message is called, It's Not How You Start, It's How You Finish. Ooh, hallelujah. It's not how you start, it is how you finish. Today we'll be reading from the book of Jonah. It's a small, short little book after the book of Obadiah and before the book of Micah. And it's towards the end of the Old Testament, just in case you needed a little bit of guidance on where it is, because it's very short. <sighs> the book of Jonah. Many, if not all of you, know the story of Jonah. <laughs> it's like a famous Sunday school lesson, how the prophet of God gets swallowed by a whale. But in real life, he didn't get swallowed by a whale. It just says it was a great fish. It could be, but it doesn't say whale in the scripture. It just says a large fish. <laughs> but I know... Many of us know this story, but I pray that today when we read the story that you have a fresh pair of eyes and ears and that your heart will be open, receptive to the word of the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Jonah. We're going to start with the first chapter and I'm going to start. <clears throat> We're going to go through verse 1 through 3 for the intro. So the Lord sent this message to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and give them this announcement from the Lord. I'm going to destroy you for your wickedness rises before me and it smells to highest heaven. But Jonah was afraid to go and ran away from the Lord. He went down to the seacoast to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving towards Tarshish. He bought a ticket, went on board and climbed down into the dark hold of the ship to hide there from the Lord. So here we see that God told Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh, right? Which was, if we want to get deeper, Nineveh was Assyria's most important city. It was like basically the capital of Assyria, right? And it was also Israel's most dreaded enemy, right? Assyria was the rising world power of Jonah's day. So this was like a, a grand spectacular city but God was fed up because Nineveh was so full of wickedness even though Jonah doesn't go into that much details of the wickedness of Nineveh I did some research and the book of Nahum gives more insight Nineveh was known for being a bloody city exploitation of the helpless cruelty and war idolatry prostitution witchcraft flaunting their power before God and the world through numerous heartless acts even though Nineveh was beautiful and impressive on the outside, it was vicious and deceitful on the inside. And God had enough of it. So he was sending Jonah, please go ahead and tell these people judgment is coming. Imagine a city, a, a, a place that is so filled with wickedness that it rises to the highest heaven and God says, uh-uh, I can't deal with this anymore. And we can see that example also with Sodom and Gomorrah, how the wickedness was so great that God had to wipe them out. And God was telling them in advance to Nineveh, look, you guys, you know, this, is, this cannot continue. So I'm going to send the man of God to tell you to repent and turn from your ways. But here we have a little twist of the story. Jonah refused to go. He was like, oh no, God, you know, I've done many things for you, but I don't think this is, uh, I can't do this. He, Jonah was like, forget that. <laughs> I'd rather go somewhere else. So imagine Jonah grew up hating the Assyrians and fearing their atrocities, you know? And now the Lord was sending him to preach to them? He's like, no. So instead, he ran away, it says. He ran away. He bought a ticket, climbed on this random ship to go to Tarshish, li literally the opposite direction, and climbed down all the way to the dark hold of the ship to hide there from the Lord. Have you ever found yourself running away and trying to hide from God's plan for your life? Yes. <laughs> uh, I think we could all say yes to that <laughs> you know like we look at Jonah and we can laugh and be like you know did he really think that he could actually hide from an omnipresent all-knowing God but think really good is there something that God has told you to do and instead you've ran away and hid from him thinking that oh he'll eventually forget about it 
there is something you know deep down inside that God has told you to do it, but you just don't want to do it. That was Jonah. You see, just as God was sending Jonah to go somewhere, do something, God has given you a specific plan, a specific purpose, as in a specific assignment for your life. And everyone assumes that this great plan of God is glamorous, it's, flash, it's flashy, it's ostentatious. It's like, oh my gosh. But really, if you really read your Bible, if you do the homework, you're going to find out that every person in the Bible who obeyed God's calling in their life had to follow hard, unthinkable, uncomfortable, and at times, un seemingly illogical instructions. So obeying God doesn't mean that you're going to be happy to do it. If you're writing notes, you might as well write that down. Because a lot of times we think that obeying God is going to be like, woo, sometimes it hurts to obey God. So obeying God doesn't mean that you're going to be happy to do it sometimes. And that's what this was the case with Jonah. Let's continue reading verse 4 to 6. But as the ship was sailing along, suddenly the Lord flung a terrific wind over the sea, causing a great storm that threatened to send them to the bottom. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard. Like, picture this in your mind. This is not no little storm. This was a massive storm. And they were desperate. They were throwing the cargo, trying to lighten the load of the ship. And all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain, you know what the captain did? He went down after him and he said, what do you mean, bro? He roared, sleeping at a time like this? Oh, no, no, no. Get up and cry to your God and see if he will have mercy on us and save us. Let's hold right there. <laughs> That's juicy right there. <laughs> Jonah was sound asleep. It didn't say that Jonah was like, you know, taking a nap, you know. I don't know if you've ever been caught in a storm on a boat. That joke is scary. And there's no time for sleeping because it's like, you know what I'm saying? But no, Jonah, he was sound asleep. There was nothing. People were yelling. The, st the boat was going all kinds of directions. And he was like, didn't hear nothing. And I think it's easier to disregard the Lord's powerful. voice for someone who has never had an encounter. You know, if you never ha and had an encounter with the Lord, his voice doesn't really mean anything to you. But when you know the Lord and you find yourself in a place, you know, deep down inside, you shouldn't be in, it should be uncomfortable. When you know the Lord and you're, you're around people you shouldn't be hanging around with, it's uncomfortable. Yes. Or how about doing the very thing that God told you not to mess with, it's uncomfortable. So it should be. It should be uncomfortable. Because when you're chosen, there are things that you can't get away with, even though everybody else is doing it. But when you in disobedience, at first you will feel restless. And I think that's what Jonah was feeling. The Lord confronted him, telling him to go, and he was probably restless. But then instead, he kept ignoring the voice of the Lord. So eventually, that restlessness, that uncomfortable feeling, that holy guilt, you shut that thing out until you can't hear it anymore. And that's how Jonah was. He shut out the voice of God so completely that he was sound asleep in a crazy storm. Just because you don't feel guilty about going against God's word doesn't mean you are doing the right thing. If God told you to do something, if God has a plan in your life, if God is instructing you to let go of that, don't mess with these people. Get on the right path and you don't feel uncomfortable about it. There must be a point in your life where you completely shut out the voice of the Lord and now you are sound asleep in the bottom of a storm of a, a boat in a hell of a storm mm. we cannot measure obedience by our feelings because if you if you want it bad enough you will convert your feelings into what you want to feel Woo! Preach Preach it. It, we must <laughs> compare our actions with the standards of god's word for living so if you don't have that uncomfortable restless feeling you are in trouble Hey, 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 hey. And that's what happens. Sin makes you sleepy. Oh, 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 oh. Disobedience makes you sleepy. Y'all hear me today, are you? Hello? Yes. 
So I was like, sleep, you know? I was like, we all know what sleep is, you know? You close your eyes, you, you go into this deep re relaxation place and, and you can't hear anything, everything just goes and you sleep and then whenever you feel like waking up, you wake up, right? That's what sleep is. So then I was like, well, let me get a proper definition of what sleep really is because I felt compelled to do so. Sleep is a condition of body and mind in which the eyes are closed, the postural muscles relaxed, the activity of the brain altered, and consciousness of the surroundings of the surroundings are practically suspended. And I was like, Jesus, harabakoto robo shaya. And that's the thing about disobedience, that you don't know what's going on anymore. Wow, wow. Exactly. Have you that's ever good, been in a situation? No, no, let me ask you something. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where all hell can be breaking loose? The cargo, they're throwing out the cargo, the ship, the, the ship is going all over the place, almost going to sink, and all hell is breaking loose if you're in your life, you but know. you're spiritually sound asleep. <laughs> you, don't know what the you don't have no idea. So spiritually, your eyes are closed. What is this? Because this is right here. I feel the Holy Ghost. Spiritually, your eyes are closed. You're inactive. What happens when you're sleeping? You don't, you don't, for the most part, you know, you don't move. Your brain is altered and your consciousness is suspended. What do you do when your life is in chaos, out of order, cluttered, a mess, turbulent, and everyone can see it except you? Disobedience makes us sleepy. Harabashaya. Are you sleepy today? Can everybody see that there's something wrong coming in your life? They can see the storm. They're saying, what? What do you mean? Sleeping at a time like this. Get up. Cry to your God. But you're sound asleep. You're not able to discern. You're not able to feel the voice of the Lord telling you, hey, get up, hey, get up, hey, get up. You're sound asleep. What is it that has you sleepy? What has you so sleepy that you can't even hear the voice of the Lord? Your, your consciousness in the spiritual realm is suspended. It's not working. People can sense things, but you can't sense it because sin and disobedience makes you sleepy. People say, so there's something wrong with you, honey. You need to wake up and you roar at them. Why? Because you're sleepy. No, let's be real. It's funny, but it's the truth. How many times somebody has told you, look, listen, I, you know, I feel the Lord just, you know, look, there's something wrong, you know? And you're just like, what do you mean there's something wrong? Look at you. You're sleepy. Let's go to verse seven. Let's continue with this story. Then the crew, listen what happens. Then the crew decided to draw straws to see which of them offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. You see, this is how sovereign the Lord is. Like these people, they think that, you know, what they're doing actually works on a daily basis. And they just got lucky because the prophet of God was on there. <laughs> listen, they started doing the straws to see which of them offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. And Jonah knew he, he drew the short one. So he was the one who was guilty. What have you done, they asked, to bring this awful storm upon us? Who are you, huh? What, what do you, what do you, where do you work at? What country are you from? What is your nationality? No, because we need to know now. You, you guilty. What you do? And he said, I'm a Jew. I worship Jehovah, the God of the heaven, who made the earth and the sea. And he told them he was running away from the Lord. Then the men were terribly frightened. Okay, when they heard this, and they said, oh my God, why did you do it, man? They shouted, what should we do to you to stop the storm? For it is getting worse and worse. And you know what Jonah said? Throw me out into the sea. And he said, it will come, become calm again. For I know this terrible storm has come because of me. Let me tell you, what you do affects your environment and the people around you. We like to think that what we do is our business. Mm -hmm. And that no one will get hurt for our poor choices. That little secret sin that you do, nobody's going to get hurt. This is my business. I can do whatever I want because I'm free to choose however I feel like it. This is my life. But the truth is, is that it does affect everyone on your boat. 
Jonah thought he could run away from God and just sleep it out. But eventually his disobedience affected the whole ship and put everyone at risk of death. No one knew what Jonah was up to, but that thing, let me tell you, everything that you do in secret will have a public consequence. Wow, wow, Rachel, that's powerful. Everything that you do in secret will have a public consequences, and it will come out to light. Yes. So you might be thinking that you're getting away with that Ugh. little sleepiness, that little disobedience. Try to sleep it out. Try to numb out the voice of the Holy Ghost. Try to walk in the opposite direction. Or when you should be on your way to Nineveh, but you want to take the easy way route. You want to take the easy way. I should be praying. I should be getting closer to God. But I'm going to just take the easy way out. I'm just going to watch watch what I'm not supposed to be watching. I'm just going to hang around these people that have no spiritual and, and help to my life. I'm just going to go ahead and fill my life with filth and corruption because it's my business this is my life but you don't understand that your business your life is affecting everyone around you and just because you don't see it everybody else can see it but you wow. and feel it and mm -hmm. feel it we like to think that this this natural realm is all that there is but there is a spiritual realm you are a spiritual being and whatever you do to your spirit can affect other people's spirit and this is what is happening right now in this generation all right, let's go to verse 13 through 17. It's getting good, right? The story is juicy. <laughs> Bring it on. So look, this is what the crew started to do. They, man, they were trying harder to row the boat ashore, but they couldn't make it. The storm was so fierce to fight against it. They shouted out a prayer to Jehovah, Jonah's God. Oh, Jehovah, don't make us die for this man sins. Please. Don't hold us accountable. Don't hold us responsible for his death. For it is not our fault, man. You set this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Hey, we, we clean our hands. Don't kill us for this guy, please. Yeah, that's, that's Rachel translation. All right. So you know what happened? They couldn't do it anymore. It was just getting too, too crazy. So verse 15, they picked up Jonah and threw him overboard into the raging sea. And the storm stopped. Look, this is my favorite part. Then the men stood there in awe before Jehovah and sacrificed to him and vowed to serve him. They're like, oh, don't tell me we just threw him overboard and now everything is all peaceful. We're like, Jesus, <laughs> we vow to serve you. So now, the, then as they threw him out there. Romans 8, 28. The verse 17, now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. You know, when I read that part, I was like, man, how embarrassing that the Hebrew, not the Hebrew, the heathen sailors showed show more compassion to Jonah than the Jonah, you know, he was running away to, from the Ninevites, right? So they were more compassionate to Jonah by trying to avoid him from like being thrown into sea. While Jonah refused to warn the Ninevites of the coming destruction. And I was like, man... A heathen can do a better job than the man of God. That is embarrassing. And how embarrassing that God used Jonah's in disobedience to prove his, his, um, his, like, you know, that he's sovereign to others who didn't know him. They threw Jonah in there. They said, who, who are you? Well, I'm, my God is this, the God of heaven and, and the sea and the earth. And, uh, you know, and they're like, okay, well, whatever. They didn't, they didn't think nothing of it. But then as soon as, as they threw Jonah in there, they're like, oh yeah, you serve the true God. And now I'm believing. So how it, crazy is it that even in our failures, in our, in our mistakes, God can use that and still work everything out for his glory. Amen. Amen. Anytime we refuse to do God's will by being Christ-like, you are robbing somebody else's chance to believe. Wow, that's powerful. Even in Jonah's disobedience, God was still working everything out for the good. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and do everything that you feel like it and then come to God whenever you're ready. And God is still going to work it out for your good. No, honey. That's just God's mercy. What God wants to do is bless you. God wants to lead you into paths of righteousness now. Hallelujah. That doesn't work that way. 
God is so merciful and so good that even when we stumble and we fall, he's ready to pick us up. But that is not an excuse to continue to stumble and fall and think that we can still straggle our way to prosperity and blessing. And to be honest, we can give we can give Jonah, you know, like good because you know what instead of being like oh this storm i don't know this storm i have no idea what's going on he actually sucked it up and said look this is my fault this is this storm is, is because of me because i'm running away from god and you know what that showed me something that it might be painful but admitting to our sin can be a powerful example to those who don't know god seriously if you continue to think that you you don't you don't need to humble yourself that you that you, you don't have any power. You're not humble. You're not humble. And James 4 6 says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So if you want to parade on your grace message, humble yourself, repent, and turn from your ways. You are more affected to God when you humble yourself and repent than to remain proud and self-righteous. And here we can give it to Jonah because instead of continuing to cover his, his dirt, he said, look, this is my fault. I'm sorry. And God had mercy. And God sa even saved these sailors who didn't know him, even when Jonah messed up and lost his way. So if we go to chapter 2, we see how Jonah prayed this really, you know, nice prayer to the Lord while he was inside a fish. Can you believe he was inside a fish three days and three nights? He was without food. He was without water. He was, no, no, just nobody could, could like put their mind, like how, what is it to feel like being inside a fish? And I hope nobody ever, because <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's tough. But he, he was inside the fish, and I'm going to read the chapter really quick. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. In my great trouble, I cried to the Lord, and he answered me from the depths of death. I called, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths. I sank down into the floods of waters and was covered by your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have rejected me and casted me away. How shall I ever see your holy temple? I sank beneath the waves, and death was near. The waters closed above me. The seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains that rise from off of the ocean floor. I was locked out of life and imprisoned in the land of death. But, O oh Lord, my God, you have snatched me from the yawning jaws of death. When I had lost all hope, I turned my thoughts once more to the Lord, and my earnest prayer went to you in, my holy, in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods have turned their backs on all the mercies waiting for them from the Lord. I will never worship anyone but you, for how can I thank you enough for all that you've done? I will surely fulfill my promises, for my deliverance comes from the Lord alone. And the Lord ordered the fish to spit up Jonah on the beach, and it did. Listen to Jonah's prayer. Jonah was like, God, please don't get, let me get out of this whale, oh, in this whale, <laughs> this fish. Let me get out of this fish. He wasn't like, please. He was saying, God, death was coming after me. I felt the, the darkness. I felt me going to the, the depths of the depths. The, the, just death was near. And he's like worshiping the Lord. Lord, thank you because you are my God. It says here, when I thought all was lost, you gave me hope. My thoughts turned to you once more to the Lord. My earnest prayer went to you. Hallelujah. How, how many can we say that when we're in the depths of our consequences and our sin and caught up in a storm, caught up in our own consequences, that we just pray, God, get me out. God, get me out. God, get me out. But humble yourself and say, God, even if you don't get me out, I still will praise you. And if you give me a second chance, I will do it right. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, he says, for my deliverance comes from the Lord. How can I thank you enough for all that you've done? How many of us can thank God for all that he's done in the middle of a hard trial? Jesus. Or does your prayer sound like this? Oh God, please save me. Get me out of this. What, so you can go back to your wicked ways? Oh, hallelujah. 
No, we need to humble ourselves, repent, and turn. And that's exactly what God, see, God ordered the fish to spit him out because God saw the intentions of Jonah's heart. And some of you guys are waiting to be spit out from a great situation, but God is not going to let you out until you turn your heart towards him. Hallelujah. It's not about how pretty your prayer is. It's not how eloquent your words are. It doesn't matter how good you behave after, after you've been swallowed by the jaws of death. It's the change of your heart that matters that will provoke God to say, spit her out. Spit him out. That's my son. And he still is mine. Hallelujah. God will send a tragedy to get us to wake up and turn us around to walk in the right direction. And that, and let me tell you, that direction is loaded with mercy. Jesus, yeah, this five, two, the back, yeah. There's a difference when God sends you a tragedy and the, the, the Lord allows the enemy to bring his tragedy. The enemy's tragedy, there's no hope. But with God's tragedy, to bring you into a right standing with him will always work out for your good. Who preach it, girl? Preach it. But if we choose to ignore God's signs to get us to get right, the Lord gives us over to our desires. So imagine if, if Jonah was like, oh, still in the belly of the ocean with the wrong attitude, with the wrong motives. What worse could have happened with him? Because we don't like to think about that. But we, we see, we see because, of, because Jonah turned his heart, his attitude, he turned away in his heart before he turned away in the natural. Yes, yes. And a lot of times we want to act like we're turning away in the natural and it's not working because you can never walk in a direction if your heart is not in it. Nah. Because if your heart is not in it, you will always revert. Am I, am I, hello? Yes, mm -hmm. girl, you preach it, preach it, preach it. Oh my Lord. Do not take God's chances lightly. Do not take his second chances lightly. Jesus. When God gives you a second chance, you better hold on tight to that thing because you don't know if there's going to be another one. Let's read chapter three. Check this out. This, this, this is where it gets good. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah again. He said, okay, I see you. You want to obey me now, right? Okay, now go to that great city, Nineveh. Okay, we're not done with that. He said, and warn them of their doom, as I told you before. Listen to that. When you decide to follow the Lord, that doesn't mean that every order that he gave to you in the past is erased. Mm -hmm. Just because God gives you mercy, the, 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 the order to live right is still pending. You cannot have God's second chance, God's mercy for you to do whatever you feel like it. I'm glad that you're walking in the right direction, Jonah. I'm glad you're doing what's right now. And I'm glad I'm going to support you. But we're still going to Nineveh. And a lot of times we want to take God's second chance and be like, yes, I feel better. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I was, I was going through hell and now I feel better. But don't take that second chance of the Lord and forget about the order that he has commanded you. Girl. So Jonah obeyed. Jonah obeyed and he went, verse 3, to Nineveh. <clears throat> now Nineveh was a very large city. Let me tell you, this city was incredible. This city was so big, so large, with extensive suburbs, so large that it would take three days to walk around it. It was massive. But the very first day when Jonah entered the city and began to preach, guess what happened? The people repented. Like that. It says, Jonah shouted to the crowds that gathered around him. He said, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. And they believed him. And you know what happened? They declared a fast from the king on down. Everyone put sad cloth for the rough, coarse garments worn at times of mourning. And then when the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and laid aside his royal robes and put on sad cloth and Dang. sat in ashes. Wow. When the Lord tells you to turn and repent of your ways, you ought to sit up off of your throne and let God take his rightful place on your throne. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we want to put on the, the sackcloth, the ashes, the mourning, but we don't want to get off our throne. Mm -hmm. Girl, preach it with a capital P. What, what happens when you're sitting on a throne? 
You are in control. You have power. You can dictate. You can tell, do this and it will be done. And a lot of times we don't want to give up our royal position and our throne because as soon as God gets in it, we don't have the power. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't have a say. We don't know how to do things. <laughs> but let me tell you, God is telling you tonight, get off of your royal throne and place me as a king of your life. Are you willing to do that? Gosh, yeah, yeah. yeah, get off your throne. And this king, it didn't even take him a day. He was like, oh my gosh, the king and his nobles sent this message throughout the city. And you know what the king did? He told everybody, let no one, not even the animals, eat anything, nor even drink any water. Everyone must wear sackcloth and cry mightily to God. And let everyone turn from his evil ways, from his violence and robbing. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will decide to let us live. And who will hold back his fierce anger from destroying us? And you know what verse 10 says? And when God saw that they had put a stop to their evil, evil ways, he abandoned his plan to destroy them and didn't carry it through. Amen. Hallelujah. Imagine, Jonah finally obeyed the Lord and went to preach the word of repentance and doom in this wicked city of Nineveh. And surprisingly, they listened right away. The first day, they repented and what does it say here? They put a stop to their evil ways. How ironic is it that these wicked heathens were more receptive to repent and to obey the voice of the Lord than the man of God? Hmm. You see, this is where my title comes in. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Because you, you know what? Just like Nineveh, you might have done messed up things. Or you might be struggling right now with something. You might have had a rough start in life. You might have committed things that are, you know, that are shameful. You have probably done things that people look down on you for doing them. You might have walked away from the Lord. You might have been stuck. You might be still stuck in cycles of addiction. Harabashaya. People might think, oh, he ain't ever going to be nothing. Look at his life. Look at her. Pfft, she ain't going to do anything. She's always done this. She's always been like this. You might even think. It's not probably even people. It's probably you. You think that you'll never get anything with your life. You'll never get your life together. But I came to tell you today, it is not how you start. It is how you finish. Amen. So be careful who you talk down to. Be careful who you think will never bounce back. Be careful who you think is never going to change. Be careful who you think has messed up their lives beyond repair. Because let me tell you, the most wicked of persons can jump ahead of your self-righteous self. Nineveh was more impressive, more receptive, more responsible to the, the, the calling of the Lord than Jonah when the Lord told him, go do as I say. And a lot of times we want to be all proud and, and fluffed up on our pews and, and look down to the people in the world. But be careful because they, as soon as the word of the Lord hits them in this harvest, they might come rushing to the kingdom of heaven while you still sit sitting on your seat of self-righteousness and never get ahead. It's not about what you've done. It's about how you responded when the Lord summons you to obey and repent. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not about how you start. It's how you finish. finish. Hallelujah. You ought to just tell somebody right now. It's not how you start. It's, it's how, how you finish. You start, how you finish. Say it again. It's, it's not, not how, how you start. start. It's, it's how, how you finish. finish. Ah. Hallelujah. That, that made me think of a little parable that Jesus said. Matthew 21, 28 through 32. Matthew 21, 28 through 32. The parable of the two sons. Check this out. This is the parable. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he didn't go. Huh. Which of the two did his father wanted? Then the people answered, the first. 
Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. Even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful that you don't think you're so strong that you, will, that you might not fall. Be careful that you look down on your neighbor huh, who's living in the world Arabashaya, and, 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 and think that there's nothing, no hope left for them. But there's more hope for them than for you. Because as soon as God says, get your life together, get your life together, you won't humble yourself and turn from your wicked ways. Jesus. Let me tell you, the person, the prostitute, the tax collector, the one who's overdosing right now in drugs and alcohol. Oh, there's a day that's coming when the Lord is going to summon them and they're going to turn from their ways. Not all of them, but there's going to be a remnant that people, God is calling to themselves. And be careful that you've been in the house of God since your youth and you won't make it to the kingdom of God because you refused to obey when the Lord told you it's time to do it. Y'all ain't hear me today, are you? Be careful because it is not how you start, it's how you finish. We're going to see a, a time the Lord says that his kingdom is very surprising because a lot of times we think that it's the most holiest person that never done anything wrong in their lives. But those people sometimes are the most disgusting and secret. Hallelujah. We see preachers and priests molesting and raping children. People trying to get over on people in the church. And God is saying, I'm in, enough is enough. Like Nineveh, your, your sin is getting up to my nostrils and I can't tell it anymore if nobody's gonna go to my banquet then i'm gonna look for the people out there who are, who are disgusted that are looked down upon that have messed things up but as soon as they hear me summon them they will put on different garments and they will enter my kingdom oh, be careful who you look down on because it's not how you start it's how you finish that's right that's right girl that's you right. can say you love god all you want let me tell you but never love him it's not about what you say it's about what you do and there's gonna be a time where there's gonna to be a division between the goats and the, the sheep and you know what's the difference obedience hallelujah god might call you god might summon you but the bible says many are called but few are chosen and the the, the, the thing that qualifies you is your level of obedience that's right girl that's right not even your level of obedience your complete obedience, obedience. you're complete it's complete God, amen, amen, amen. god is looking for people who are who will prove to him through their actions and obedience. Let me tell you, it's not by works, it's by faith. But let me tell you, when you have faith in what the Lord has done for you, your life has to change. The things that you used to do, you don't do it anymore. When God summons you, when God says it's time, honey, to turn your life around, there's something be ought to be in you that says, I cannot do this anymore because there's something that's come over me that has changed my mind, has changed my heart. I'm not the same person. I might start in a certain way, but I'm not going to finish this way because you know what? It's not how I start. It's how I finish. Yes. The Holy Spirit. You can act like a man and a woman of God all you want, but you might not even be one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, hallelujah. It's not how well you know about the Christian lingo. I don't care if you can read Genesis through, through Revelation or oh, Bible memorization. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you haven't missed a, church, a Sunday's church service in, in, in 30 years. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how well you teach, how well you speak. If you won't obey. Hallelujah. You cannot enter in. Girl, preach, preach. Harabashaya. Let me tell you, the worst of sinners who repent is better than the religious hypocrite who won't obey the Lord when it reaches his ears. Ooh. Repeat that, repeat that. Repeat. The worst of sinners, okay? The worst of sinners, the worst of the worst, when he repents, that person is better than a religious hypocrite who won't obey the word of the Lord when it reaches their ears. Wow. They're asleep. They can't see anything. They can't hear anything. All the consciousness is, has been suspended. Their mind, their brain has altered. Some of you have been asleep for way too long and God is saying, I'm calling out for people and if you don't wake up from this storm, I'm sending you right now. Oh, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss it. But God is saying a ray of hope that you might have started bad, but it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You might have ignored the, the Lord a long time, but it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Finish right. Finish with passion. Start to stand up for righteousness. Break every generational curse. Y'all playing games up in this house. And God is saying, I, I, I can't take anymore. The, the, the stench has reached me. And tell my people, if they don't repent from their ways, I'm about to wipe them out. But God is saying to those who will humble themselves, turn from their ways, I will heal their land. Ba -ba 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 -shaya. The Ninevites were so serious, they even had the animals fast, fast with them. Can you imagine how, how crazy it is that they just were so desperate to do what's right and get their lives on track that they closed every possible door, even the animals. How many of you have been so convicted by God's gospel that you just don't want to do it anymore? Every possible opening, we slam that junk shut. We're going to do it Woo! right. Oh, y'all ain't hear me today, are you? Hallelujah. Some of you guys want to obey partially. Yes, we stopped. We stop from our evil ways but we have a little door open over here and god is saying close them doors aye, aye, aye. close every door even if you don't think it could be a door if there's a hint of something close it that's how you know who's for real in the yes, kingdom of god yes, yes. if you think that uh, come on, if you think that a little bit of, of 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 upsetting the lord is not a big deal you are wrong you don't have the fear of the lord They were so sincere. They repented of their way. They told nobody, nobody, nobody. Oh, nobody's Jesus. gonna eat a crumb. Nobody's gonna drink water. Nobody's gonna have anybody feeding their animals. We're gonna get right. How many of us are so passionate to do things right when God has given us a second chance? Because I'm the first one to say that I've messed up. And when I thought there was no hope for me, God said, repent and turn from your ways. I'm giving you an answer right now to your problems. Turn from your wicked ways. And I had a choice whether to continue to sleep in my obedience, to continue to, to die and waste away in my life, or say, God, I don't like how this feels, but let's get with the program because I want to make it in. Woo! Talk about all of my mistakes all you want, but God has redeemed me. Ay, 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 it's ay, not ay, how ay. I started, it's how I finished. That's what's up. Amen, amen. Woo! Jesus. Oh. Verse 10, then God saw their works. They turned away from their evil ways, and God relented from the disaster he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Let me tell you, ladies and gentle men, there is a judgment that is coming so hard, hallelujah, and it's called the final last days, hallelujah, the judgment of the, the Lord, the day of the Lord. There's a judgment that is not coming to just America, but the entire globe, and if you are not ready, if you are not willing, if you're not receptive to turn away from your evil ways. God is saying, you either come in or come out, but I'm about to wipe everything out. If you would just not harden your heart and listen right now, you will be changed forever. Don't waste time. Don't play that Russian roulette. You don't know when is your last time. Don't take the second chances of God lightly. Yes, Jesus. Let's continue, man. This, this is getting good. How many How many are receiving? Jesus. And those are online, if you're receiving, put in the chat, I am receiving. Hallelujah, I receive this. Say what you want. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. All right. The change of plans made Jonah very angry. <laughs> the change of plans made Jonah angry. Can you believe that? He complained to the Lord about it and said, You see, man, this is exactly what I thought you would do. Lord, when I was there in my own country and you first told me to come here, look, this is why, look, that's why I ran away to Tarshish because I knew you were a gracious God. You were merciful, slow to get angry and full of kindness. I knew how easily you could cancel your plans for destroying these people. Listen, Jesus, please kill me, Lord. This is Jonah. Please kill me. I'd rather be dead than alive right now. When nothing that I told them it happened, I, I can't do this. You know what the Lord said? Is it right for you to be angry about this, Jonah? So Jonah went out and sat sulking on the east side of the city. And you know what he did? He made a leafy shelter to shade him as he waited to see if anything would happen to the city. 
You see, none of us deserve the mercy and forgiveness of God. But he gives it to those who truly repent and turn amen. from their wicked ways. Amen, amen. He doesn't desire to harm us. That's what Jonah was saying. He's like, you know what? This is why I didn't want to go. He just let out his true intentions. You know why? Because I knew, I knew you were a gracious God. I knew you're merciful. I know you're slow to get angry. And I know you're full of kindness. I know how easily you can cancel your plans for destroying these people. Jonah was so salty about God's compassion. He was so salty that he actually wished that he would die. That's strong. You see? Tell you never put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. Because let me tell you, when you start doing the right thing, when you make the decision to serve the Lord, not everyone is going to celebrate you, honey. Oh. Actually, people are going to start hating you. And it's written in the word. Jesus says, if you pick up your cross and follow me, expect the persecution. Expect the criticism. Expect it. Yes, sir. So, we see here how Jonah, he should have been like, oh my God, this went better than I expected. One day, I didn't even have to go travel. Three days. These people, wow. God, I can't believe I missed it whole time i was running away and you had a big plan and you know i just i'm sorry he was like you see i can't believe this right now they don't deserve it they don't deserve it so instead of celebrating the 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 salvation of people he was salty about it and wished that he would die and then he sat on the east side of the city to wait for their destruction you see wow people are going to start hating you when you do the right thing and it's not people because we'd wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's the principalities. It's the forces of darkness that people have allowed to completely take over their body, whether they like it or not. And when you start to do the right thing, the people that are on the opposite side of the kingdom cannot stand it. Look, let's take about right now. I'm zooming out of Jonah right now. Because let's think about it. How, how has ever been a time where you st stood up for righteousness and random people come at you attacking you for your decision? For saying, no, I don't want to do this. Hello? Mm -hmm. And if nobody is attacking you for doing right, then you might, as you might check if you actually have anything. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how it is. You're going to get resistance. And maybe not through a person, but the enemy himself is going to throw you trying to get rid of a habit. And all of a sudden, people come out of nowhere giving you the, the habit on a free platter. All of a sudden, you're trying to run away from girls. And all of a sudden, girls that, that wouldn't even look at you are all, all up on you. Hallelujah. Oh, you're trying to get rid of some, some website. And all of a sudden, it just starts popping up, popping up, popping up. I'm just throwing out, you know, scenarios. Hallelujah. When you start doing the right thing, don't expect a celebration in hell. Because let me tell you, not everybody is going to celebrate. Oh, it says when, when a soul gets saved, all the angels celebrate. But when a soul gets saved... All of hell has a problem with it and expect the warfare. That's why the Lord says in the word, he says, put on the armor to withstand the, the schemes of the enemy. Your war is not against flesh and blood. You're looking at somebody else, but God is saying, get ready because this war that you're going to be against is not against flesh and blood. But guess what? I'm on your side. You know why people you know why the enemy has a problem that you are doing what's right because before you were under a curse the same curse that he's under curse to them uh, eternal damnation but now you have God's blessing over your life the blessing that he will never have and let me tell you now that you're doing what's right you know what you were in darkness but now you're glowing in his light hallelujah you were going nowhere with your life but all of a sudden let me tell you you got a purpose now you got a purpose now you got a purpose now hallelujah you were in lack but now all of a sudden you have everything that you need and more abundance hallelujah oh what happens you were a slave to sin but now all of a sudden you you are a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You are wasting your life away. But what happened now? You're living life to the fullness. What does John 10, 10 say? The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. But if you are, are you, are you made it up in your mind that you're going to finish right? Don't expect a party in hell. Expect war. People might be upset because they knew 
how your story was going to end. The enemy might, be, might have been laughing at you. <laughs> Look at this. So stupid. Literally, that's how the enemy thinks of you. Look, he, he fell for the trap again. <laughs> look, look, he's wasting his life away. Look, y'all see that? Uh -huh, look at that. What a fool. That's how the enemy does every time you sleep in your sin. You sleep in disobedience. Because as, as soon as he knows that you turn from your sleeping and you awaken in the spirit of God, all of a sudden they're like, oh, y'all, 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 she got it, she got it. Oh, my God, we can't mess with her like we used to mess with her. We can't mess with him like we used to mess with him. Because now he's not on his own. He has an army of angels. So let the naysayers say what they have to say. Say what you got to say. I don't really care. Let the haters hate all day. I do not care. You know what? Jonah was so salty that he was like, please kill me. And let me tell you, enemy, how do you got to get so you got to get so up in the word that you say, you know what? Die waiting for me, devil. You ain't going to see my destruction because it's not how I start. It's how I finish. And it's not by might nor not by power, but by his spirit in me, says the Lord. I am changed. Aye. Let me tell you, when you know you ain't doing right, you hide like Jonah did. But when you're doing right, you get all confident. You said, enemy, you said what? You said what? No, 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 no. Let me tell you what I'm on. I'm a change now. I'm redeemed. The things that I used to do anymore, I don't do it anymore. You might have been laughing at me because I was stuck on that addiction. You might have been laughing at me because I was stuck on distraction, wasting my life away when I could have been girding myself in the word of God. Oh, you might have think that I was going to go down, but I changed the script because I have decided that I will serve the Lord amen, and I will amen, obey him. Amen, amen. Praise Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. I'm saved now. <laughs> I'm, I'm redeemed now. Hallelujah. I've been restored. Let me tell you, I've been delivered. Hallelujah. Yeah, if you can't get, if you're not bold enough to say that, then you ought to just shake off the shackles that are holding you down. Every shackle of disobedience and sin that has crippled you. Hallelujah. Let it go. Claim your sonship. Claim your daughtership. Had a shut up. In the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. People ought to tell you, where are you from? Not because you're in disobedience, but because they I gotta know who's your daddy. Hallelujah. Woo! Just as when you're doing wrong, everybody can tell. Let me tell you, when you're doing right, everybody on the ship gotta say hello. Who, who is My your daddy? daddy? Where do you come from? Yeah. Where's your nationality? What is going on here? Because all of a sudden, as soon as you got into our ship, we've been blessed. We've been transformed. We've been Woo! feeling a little bit lighter. We've been feeling like amen, we, we want to change our lives or something like that. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. It's not how I start. It's how I finish. It's not how I start. It's how, how I, I finish. finish. And some of you are wondering, where did I get that title? Maybe you're not, but I'm going to tell you anyways. This is how I got the title. When I was doing terrible in school, because I'm not a school book person, I just got did my studies to get through it. I'm not passionate about the books, but I am passionate about this. But let me tell you, mom told me, look, you know, it's a new year. Give it all you got. I started good. Getting good in my grades, started focusing, because you know what my problem was? It's not that I was stupid, it's that I like to talk in class and play. And that's my problem, okay? So what happened was, I was going to be like, oh my yeah, Lord. you know, all my friends, you know, I'm going to start like, you know, chilling with you later. I'm going to try to work and get right and stuff. So I started the first quarter off, right? And then all of a sudden, I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> in class and I started to go and you know my, my teacher came and she's like look Rachel's struggling you know she's not she's behind in her work she's not get, getting stuff done on time like you know you need to do something and mom said look honey I was like mom you know I was, I was doing good she's like yeah yeah I, I know but you know what it's not how you start it's how you finish so let me tell you, you might have the best intentions and you might want to do the right thing. But if you're not set on the Lord in obedience, if you don't have the Holy Spirit to back you up, that thing inside of you that wants to play games is going to come back and ruin the destiny, the, the plan, the award in your life. Jesus. It's not how you start, it's how, how you finish. finish. And you might have started good, but now the enemy wants to play games with you and you playing his games too. But God is saying, no, wake up, honey. I'm going to send you a storm not to kill you but to correct you because i want to bless you and a lot of times you're resenting the power of the lord because he wants to bless you but god is saying let me tell you if you would just hear what i'm saying today if you would just obey what i'm trying to tell you if you would just listen to the people that i tell you something is wrong let me tell you you would have a little bit of more sense to say i want to turn my life around oh 
Oh Lord, have well, us. Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, I'm about to let me just close this chapter up because you know. Right. Where are we? We're powerful, powerful. We're on chapter four, verse four. Then let me tell you. This is what the Lord said. Is it right for you to be angry? Like for real, about this. Are you are you serious right now? Yeah, because when I read the word, I get into it. So like that, y'all don't fall asleep, right? Okay. <laughs> so Jonah went out and sat. You know what he did? He was he was out there sulking on the east side of the city, and he made a leafy shelter to the shade and blah, blah, blah. He was, he was waiting. He's like, yeah, I'm going to wait till these people perish. Mm -mm. These people are going to go to hell, and I'm going to be the front row seat. Mm. You know what happened? <laughs> when the leaves of the shelter that he did started to wither away, because that's what happens, <laughs> it don't, it can't prosper, okay? The Lord arranged for a vine to grow up quickly and spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head to shade him. And this made him comfortable and very grateful. So you know what happens? But the Lord also prepared a worm, okay? And the next morning, the worm came through and ate the stem of the plant so that it withered away and died. Then the sun was super hot. And you know what God did? He ordered a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. And the sun beat down on his head so hard until he grew faint and wished to die. Now he didn't wish to die because God was so merciful. He wished to die because he was burning up. Okay? And he said, oh my God, death is better than this right now. My Lord. And you know what God said to Jonah? Verse 9. Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? You know, God is so merciful that he will use a little, he won't swipe you off. He will just use a little lesson to show you, hmm, honey, really, is it mad for you that the plant died? Is it right for you? And then this is what the Lord said. You feel, oh yeah, no, no, Jonah said, yeah. You know what Jonah said? It is. It is right. Look, this bro, this has so much sass in this thing. Look, watch. He said, yes, it is. It is right for me to be angry enough to die. Bro, about a leaf that withered, okay? Right. The Lord said, you feel sorry for yourself when your shelter is destroyed, though you did no work to put it there, and it is, at best, short-lived. And why shouldn't I feel sorry for a great city like Nineveh with its 120,000 people in utter spiritual darkness and all its cattle? I, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, just to throw a random thing. Look, <laughs> This is our fresh revelation. Remember I told you, my like, man, Nineveh was so serious about like getting right that they even made the animals fast and stuff. The Lord saw that. Because you know what he did? He said, is it, shouldn't I feel sorry for a great city like Nineveh with all its people in utter spiritual darkness and all its cattle? A lot of you guys, like when you go into obedience and you're serious, you close every door. And the doors that you think that are always oh, not a big deal, God saw that little door of obedience. And he saw that those people were like, well, who, we, we're not making the, the animals eat. So let me tell you, every little thing that you do in obedience, in secret, God sees it. Y'all didn't hear that, right? Yes. Because a lot of times we, we know that when you do in secret, like we discussed, it will be exposed. But let me tell you, when you obey in obedience, in secret, God will give public, public, public reward. Harabashaya. No act of obedience has been not noticed by the Most High God. That's right. That's right. You preach. And just as God noticed that the people were willing to starve the animals as a fast, God has seen you in your cry when you say, I mean it. And just as God knows that when he knows you're for real, he knows when you're not for real too. So what happened? Jonah's like, oh my gosh, crying. And he's like, I'd rather die. And then the Lord is so gentle that he showed him a little lesson. What, you crying over a plant, but you're not crying over the fact that 1,000 and 1,020, 100, sorry, 120,000 people have been saved and delivered. Hallelujah. You see, God gave Jonah a second chance. But he didn't think that Nineveh deserved one too. So be careful that you forget the mercy and compassion that God also gave to you. That's right, wow. If you don't think others deserve a second chance, then why do you think you should get one? Why? Because you know what? The Bible also says, hallelujah, if you do not forgive, then the Lord cannot forgive you. <laughs> if you deny the Lord here, God will deny you there in heaven. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, let me tell you a, a, little, a little something. We cannot be playing games anymore, church. 
We cannot be playing games. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to get real with you guys right now. I love the part where Jonah, I mean, yes, Jonah was saying to the Lord, look, you know, this is the reason why. You're a God of forgiveness. You're a God of mercy. You know, you're slow to anger, blah, blah, blah. This is why I knew, I knew this was going to happen. And God is saying to you right now, each and every one of you, those who are watching online, God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God of mercy. God is abundant in kindness. He is slow to anger. But you know what? God requires obedience. Otherwise, your confession, your loyalty to him means nothing. And God is telling you today, obedience is better than sacrifice. Like Jonah, you might have, you know, maybe you grew up in the church, you know the word of God, you do the lingo, you talk the talk, you, but you don't walk the walk. And God is saying, look, honey, I love you and I respect that you love me, but it's time to respect me enough to live righteously. And maybe you find yourself running like Jonah did, running, running, running in the opposite direction that God told you because you still want to sleep in your sin. You still want to gratify the, 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 the fleshly desires and your carnality. And God is saying, come on, honey, wake up, wake up. Wake up, because this is not a regular altar call. This is calling out to the last people who are willing to respond before God takes up his people. Are you running from God's will? Are you running from your, God's plan in your life? And not to do great things, all to be a minister. Yes, because God wants to use you that way. But God cannot use you unless you have enough obedience to obey him in the little things. To obey him and to respect him enough that when it's time to seek him, that you honor him. That you give him your full attention because he loves you. And a lot of times that, that realization has to go through like through hell. And I had to learn it the hard way. But if some of y'all who, who have never experienced that hard side because you grew up in church, let me tell you, wake up now. Wake up now. Because the people that you think that are uh, because they're out there getting high smoking and, and, and snorting things, let me tell you, they might make it into heaven before you. Because when they heard the cry of the Lord, they responded. Don't be left behind because the Lord spoke to you and you refused to respond. Amen, amen, Rachel. Jonah might be impressive. He might be the man in his town in Israel. But let me tell you, he was a fool in, 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 in the eyes of God because he refused to obey the Lord when the Lord told him, please go save my people in Nineveh. If you're carnal and your fleshly desires are more important than people who have the power, that you have the power to change their lives, but you refuse to do that because you're so selfish and not to, to gratify your own thing, want to do your own business, Wake up! Wake up! Because this life is not about you. God wants to use you to bring other children who are just as precious as you to himself. And if you choose to disobey, everybody that is around you will feel it and will be affected by it. But, but let me tell you, it's time to be, let people feel and affect the Holy Spirit in our lives instead of all the junk that we're doing. That's right, that's right. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Maybe you're sound asleep spiritually and God is trying to wake you up. Wake you up through that thing that you're dealing with and you're trying to rebuke it and it doesn't go away for nothing and you feel hopeless in your prayer and it's the God is saying, stop rebuking, honey. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to get you to your senses because spiritually you're sound asleep. Spiritually you can't hear my voice. Spiritually you can't discern when I'm telling you to do something and you refuse to do it because you think I'm in approval of your own agenda. I am not, in, I'm not interested in the agenda of men. I'm in my own agenda because my agenda is perfect. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. It's time to wake up. It's time to start walking in the right direction. It's time to start obeying. It's time to repent and, and turn from our wicked ways. It's time to do what's right. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of trying to act the part. I need to live the part. I need to walk in this word. I need to be in this word. I need to be this word. I don't know if y'all is hearing me this morning, yes, yes, but I'm, I'm talking to a people that are tired and fed up of being the same way over and over again because they refuse to obey the Lord, because they refuse to listen to his voice when he's saying go don't take God's second 
chance like me. Although God's love for you is out of this world, let me tell you, you cannot even grasp how amazing God's love for you is. But there's a limit to how far you think you could go, how far you think you can twist the arm of God. Let me tell you, you ain't twisting nothing. You're twisting your own self. That's what that is. Wow. You're going to get caught eventually. God wants to catch you in open arms. Don't find yourself getting caught in a net because you're so stubborn to not hear the voice of the Lord when he's telling you to come home. We have to start. We have to start. We have to start. Because if you don't start, you ain't going to go nowhere. You have to make a decision. As for me and my house, this temple, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me. As for me in this house, I will serve the Lord. That's right. Right. Because when I make a declaration that I'm going to serve the Lord, the people who are attached to me have to prosper because I'm doing what's right. That's right. What, what do people see in you? Do they see the life, the love, the compassion, the mercy of God? Or do they see someone who is so selfish? We need to stop being selfish because we're coming into a time where the people are going to be divided. Hallelujah. And if you think that you can just fall somewhere in between, honey, that doesn't work that way. You need to make your election clear because if not, if you're in two waters, you're going to be shifted to the left. And you don't want to be on the left. You want to be on the right side in righteousness, reigning with God in eternal glory. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you think that you've messed up. Because let me tell you, honey, I've messed up and I've made my mistakes. And everybody in this room knows that I messed up. But let me tell you, it's not how I start. It's not how I start. It's how I finish. And I have made my election clear that if God gave me a second chance, that I'm not going to mess it up again. Because God has been too good to me for me to spit on his face and to trample on his blood. To be so selfish enough to think that I can take that freedom and use it for my disobedience. Some of us, some of not, and not everyone, but there's a certain group that I'm speaking to, and you have, you have disobeyed, you have disobeyed, you have disobeyed, and you have disobeyed, and God's mercy has been holding you so tightly, but there's going to be a time where God is saying, you have made your election, I can't deal with you anymore, and God is saying, I'm going to wake you up, and if you don't, if you don't accept what I'm saying to you, I can't help you. Do you realize that God cannot help the person who has decided they will not obey the Lord? It's time to wake up. So what if you obey? So what if you say to 120,000 people, but you're still so selfish that you're waiting for other people to fall after you save them? So what? You're just a resounding symbol. So what if you make all the noise that a Christian person should be doing? But if you ain't, if you're making noise and you ain't making any produce, then that don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. You may feel that, okay, God, you know, Rachel, look, what you said touched me. I'm tired of the life I'm living. Maybe, maybe you're trying to, trying to do right, but there's always something trying to bring you down, trying to bring you down. Let me tell you, that thing that's trying to bring you down is you. The best thing that you could ever do is to make up in your mind that you will obey the Lord. And it doesn't matter how many times you have fallen. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have. If you make up your mind and say, from this day on, I'm not looking back. That is the power of a righteous person. It's not about how good you are. God wants to use you. No one is worthy. No one is qualified for being used by God. But he still wants to use us and still wants us to carry out his work. But we got to obey. It doesn't matter what you've done. You're a decision away from changing the script of your life and giving yourself a great ending. Everybody hates a, a movie or a book that ends like on a cliffhanger and ends up in a negative, unless you're just, you know, addicted to sad stories. But with God, there isn't a sad story when you come in obedience to his will. It might be hard. It might be uncomfortable. It might not be flashy. It, not, it might not be... Uh, uh, you know glamorous but let me tell you that will of God is gonna take you where you need to be and that's with him in perfect eternity for all your life Jesus. give your obedience to God start today before it's too late because a lot of time we're trying to press our luck and God is saying enough of that because it's reaching to my nostrils and let me tell you when it reaches, I don't know if a foul odor has ever reached your nostrils you just want to run you just want that thing to go away you want it to 
I can't deal with this anymore. And God is getting to a point in this time of, of, of the human race, of the human history, of the globe, that he's saying, let me tell you, you think you're going to live forever, but there's a limit to where the earth is going to stop and it's going to perish. And I'm telling you now, listen to my call. Listen to me. Because if you don't listen, you are going to perish with the earth. It's not too late. God was coming to destroy Nineveh, and God is coming to destroy people, and that's a sad truth, but that's their decision. We all have a decision, but let me tell you, the only thing that saved Nineveh was their repentance that saved them, and God is saying, repent, repent, because the kingdom of God is at hand. They've been preaching this message all the way in this book. How much more do we need to repent now? If you haven't seen the signs of the times, wake up. Stop from your sleep. Wake up. Because Jesus is coming soon. Obey now before it's too late. And I encourage you, whoever is in this building, whoever is watching me right now, let me tell you, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Let the people say what they have to say about you. Let them make fun of you. Know that it's not against flesh and blood. You're going to have a war against you. But they that walk in the shadow of the Almighty shall abide under the Arabashaya. They will be protected by the Lord. Nothing can stand against you. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Amen. Hallelujah. I just, there's nothing to say. Um, I'm going to pray for the sick. I feel like um, God is moving right now. And right now is a perfect time for somebody that is feeling sick, ill. Um, I feel like somebody has a, a pain somewhere, and I, I feel like in, in your back, and God wants to heal you right now. Somebody has a, a pain in their knees. Place your hand, place your hand. God, God is moving right now. Place your hand on that, on that, on that part, wherever, whatever it is, your shoulder, whatever is bothering you right now. Place your hand there, and we're gonna pray. Whatever, whatever, wherever, place your hand there. We're gonna pray right now, and God is gonna bring a healing power. God's healing power is in this room. God's presence is here. God's presence is there where you're at, where you're feeling um, under the weather. Place your hand on your chest. Or on your head you have a headache you have a migraine right now ask place your hand right there and say father in the name of Jesus your back you need right now father bring healing to my body bring healing to my body say it to the Lord Lord you bring healing to my body in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name his blood father your blood brings healing your sacrifice brings healing to my body today in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And and I just I thank Rachel for this message that she brought. This was from God. And I, I thank the Lord. And um next week get get connected. You know what I mean? Like we have I, God already gave me a word for next week. And um just God bless you. That's all I have to say. God bless um, you. One more thing. One more thing. <clears throat> I just want to say that if he, if this message touched you, which I know that it has, I want you to understand that the greatest thing that we can ever do, as Jonah did, it was to repent. And so we don't want to just pray for your healing. You know what I mean? Because what is only for your healing if your the message was like right about the most important healing that is salvation. That is the healing that is forever and ever and ever and ever. You could get healed, and we always pray for at the end of the service. But you know, I felt like the impress. You know, you know, in my heart, it's just like bring them home, bring them home. If you receive this message and you are fed up with how you, you, because this is what this is what uh, Rachel was saying. It's no longer blaming the enemy. It's you. It's you. You're the one who's placing yourself to that sin. It's you that is running away from God. And I think that this message is so vital because you know what? It is about time that we take responsibility that not only will be saved, but that others in our ship will know that God is Lord because of what you're about to do right now. So repeat after me. And I'm glad that, you know, God is healing you from that. 
inside out because what Pastor just did was amazing. But this is the greatest healing. The greatest healing is salvation. So let's pray. Let's seal this message with this call. Father, repeat after me. Father, Father, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died, died and rose again. And rose again. I have tried, I have tried to run away. To run away. I run away from you. To run away from you. But I can't. But I can't. Because this message, but this message keeps coming up. Keeps coming up. It's me. It's me. It's me the problem. I surrender. I surrender to the God that can help me. The God that can help me through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I receive you. I receive you. I receive you. Do what I can't do. Teach me. Teach me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Guide me. Guide me. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I am safe. I am safe. And I believe. And I believe that the angels are rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing. My life is forever transformed. My life is forever transformed. And I will never go back to the vomit. And I will never go back to the vomit. Because it's not by might. It's not by might. Not by power. Not by power. But by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. That abides in me right now. Abides in me right now. Now, what Pastor did and what I did because of the obedience of God, you're completely healed Amen. from the inside out. Amen. See you next week. Amen. And, sh and share this message. Share. Share it because other people need to hear this word also. Yes. God bless you. Be transformed.